Welcome to the nightclub, guys. It's your host, Night Rancher. Now, I, I got my hands on this, um, it's a Holly 780 vacuum secondary uh, carburetor, and it's not in terrible shape. Um, it's actually it's in pretty good shape. Uh, what's special about this carburetor is that it actually has these uh, down leg boosters, which are supposed to give you a much better signal. Uh, than traditional boosters. Um, they came in a lot of OEM cars, but um, I'm actually going to try to restore this and get this ready to work on the uh, on the LS. So. I'm I started on the teardown of this build. I was very curious to see uh, what the years have been doing to this carburetor. It's a 780, so it's not a very you know popular or you know modern type of carburetor. I was very curious to know what kind of things were done to it while it's been away from my possession. So overall, um, aside from everything being super stuck, this assembly was actually fairly easy and straightforward. I was actually surprised of how many parts were missing, but I'm sure I'm going to be able to get everything back to how it's supposed to be. All right, so I've uh, completed the disassembly. I've got this down to the to the bare body. There's nothing left in here except for the boosters. Uh, one thing that I found odd, well, there's a couple things, is uh, they've got this unmarked um, power valve in here, but it looks like it's got a double gasket. You know, that's just a really thick gasket. Either way, it's... I don't see any marks on this, so I won't be able to use this power valve at all. It looks like it's still in good working order, but for now, I can't I can't use that. Next thing is uh, I found that they had uh, 76 jets in the primary metering block, and as you guys saw, this thing didn't have a secondary metering block, so chances are I'm going to have to source that. What's weird is that this secondary metering block was on the primary side, and this primary metering block was on the primary side, but it had 76 jets in the primary and this funny, funny vacuum, um, this funny power valve right here. And then this one, this is a metering block that doesn't have a, um, this is a, four, this is a, this is, this has a idle capability, but it doesn't have a fitting for, um, ported vacuum. Which I find a little odd, so I might not actually be able to reuse this metering block. I might have to switch over to a different one that's a little bit more standard. This might be like a secondary metering block or, or something, but it doesn't look like it belongs. Um, the float in this one is actually in really good shape. There's no rust in here. And uh, I'm going to be swapping out the float anyway for nitro floats. But um, it's good to know that this, this, float, this, uh, this bowl is in good shape and I'll be able to reuse this. As for the the primary squirter, it looks like they had a 25 in there. They had a 25, which is a little too small, I think. Look like I'm only stepping this up to a 31 size squirter. Probably 73 in the front, 76 in the back, and then I'm going to be swapping all these uh, flathead hardware for like Phillips head hardware that I seem that I have extras. Um, it didn't come with the base plate, so I'm going to have to source uh, a base plate from all my extras to figure it out. It also didn't come with the choke. I'm um, probably going to go mechanical choke on here. I'm going to do a little bit of tweaking to the body, and then we're going to put it in the sand blaster. So the surfaces actually came out pretty nice. It came out a little bit grainy because I didn't, um, I didn't do the proper order. If you buy a kit um, that steps it up for you, you should be able to um, get a, a nice mirror finish. Maybe even go in like um, lighter steps, not so many jumps. But 
overall it's still way better than it was before i don't know if you guys could tell when i was sanding it but each and every passage just kept getting more and more shiny another thing i did was um i cut off the this thing these have a little tube for um vented vacuum or um ported vacuum and what this does this goes to your top hat and uh when it when you go to um when you floor it it closes your your top hat so that way the hot air from your your hot vent tube doesn't go into your intake and then you get cool air um, i'm not going to be really be using it so i just trimmed it down next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to tape up the um the machine surfaces and that's going to go into the sand blasting cabinet Alright, so I'm here in the in the shop in the back and I've got my Harbor Freight um, Media Blaster cabinet ready to go. Um, I did, uh, I prepped this, got the paint and the, got the tape all there. We don't damage any of the surfaces. I'm going to try my best not to hit the inside of the, of the choke tower or inside the secondaries. Really don't want to uh, damage the boosters or plug up any of the air bleeds or or make them bigger on accident I uh, don't want to jack up the threads for well this one doesn't matter because there's no there's no squirter in the back but in the front there's a squirter um, but I'm not gonna be shooting in there I'm gonna be shooting along the rim right here and then along the side from the bottom part right here uh, and all through here I'm going to be shooting up in here but I've already filled up all the holes with either tape for the vacuum port or bolts for the threaded holes. So I don't want to have that damage. These bolts are, are no good. I've used these for a, another powder coating project. Um, and so the thread, the, the heads are always like super full of like powder coating stuff. So I'm not really worried about sandblasting through them because I'm going to sandblast through them and then I'm going to powder coat them again. So they're, they're going to end up the same after all this. So. So here it is out of the sand blaster. I mean, it did a okay job. Um, I didn't, like I said, I didn't want to hit anything on the inside. Try to hit as much of the sides as I could along with, with the choke tower. Um, basically what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the tape off. I'm going to blow out all the ports uh, and then I'm going to um, detail the, the bowl a little bit. And then we're going to start prepping it to take it to the, uh, start powder coating. So I've got the carburetor body degas in there, put it in there for about 30 minutes. Uh, I'm probably going to cut it short for a little bit. Uh, I don't need it to be in there for a long time. So I've got a, a couple different colors that I can play with here. I've got the flat black, which I've used before. I've got the red. I've got this uh, wet black. And then I've got this light gray. Um, I'm not sure what color, what is this? I'm not sure what color I, I should use, but, uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking the light gray. Let's, let's open this up. Um, I believe I got these all from Summit. So, I don't know. I don't know, should I go flat black again? I don't know, I'll figure it out. All right, so I've got my setup ready to go. I've got the carburetor, I've got a bunch of junk in here in the middle. Got my gun, uh, the line leaks, so it's, uh, I have it disconnected for right now. I already have my oven preheated and power is now on. So let's go ahead and start spraying this. So we've got the uh, the carburetor in there. Let's see. I don't know if you can 
until after it gets warm enough it's going to uh it's going to start getting kind of like uh wet actually toward the top you can kind of start seeing it kind of uh change texture so it's going to become a little bit more wet and as it becomes wet it starts to even out along the surface so i kind of went a little bit heavy so we are going to see what this ends up looking like i am aware that i put a <laughs> paper towels inside the carburetor but uh, I believe the temperature is low enough that it won't catch on fire but if it does start smoking I'll just uh, I'll just lower the temperature and then uh, I got my fire extinguisher just in case but you know I'm not too worried so this is the color of powder coat that I'm using um, I got this from Summit Racing and uh, I, this is the only like close to aluminum color that I was able to find Supposedly the cure time is 8 minutes at 392 degrees. I've got it set at 400, which is close, you know. Uh, but it also says that it depends on the total amount of time uh, that it takes to reach that temperature. And then while it's in there to get to the desired cure time. So I have it in here. Uh, camera reception right now. Uh, I have it in here. And uh, so far, it's been in here for about five minutes. Uh, I preheated the part a little bit, so the internal temperature was pretty warm before I started. All right, so this thing should be pretty much good to go. All right, it's been in here. I let it cool already, so it should be safe. It's still a little warm. It's been like, what, an hour and a half since I left it. Nothing caught on fire. None of the rags caught on fire. Which is fine. Alright, so I have to turn on the light on my phone. It, it, it's a little dark right now, but this is the only way we can really see the uh, the powder coating. So, this side wasn't really coated too well. Um, it still has that, uh, that gloss, but you can tell it's a little bit, not very uniform. Uh, it's got like a little bit, you can see right there, a little bit of shadows. Uh, the problem is that when you're powder coating with all these little like like interruptions you have like mini twisters that are formed while you were powder coating and what will happen it'll kick the powder out of where you're trying to to coat uh, as you can see the bolt holes are actually in really good shape um, no powder coating got anywhere near them actually I forgot to take out those two bolts I gotta take that out hopping up on the other side I've got a, uh, this one actually came out really nice. Let's see if I can focus. There, there you go. Um, yeah, so you can see this is very uniform, very smooth, very little shadows in comparison to the other side. So this is, this, uh, this impressed me and it's so smooth, super nice. Um, so then you got the contrast between the area that I machined earlier or really just sanded down earlier and then we got the area that I sanded down earlier um, as well here uh, take a look at the other side I've already went through and cleaned out all the passages so that's all good to go I kind of regret not painting the choke tower not powder coating it um, mainly because um, I think it would have looked pretty cool with it all uniform but at the same time I don't know Kind of like the way it looks the way it is, but, you know, it's just one of those things. After you got the uh, the little choke plate and everything on here, um, you won't even be able to see it anyway, so it's probably not a big deal. I kind of did want to keep this bare, bare aluminum, um, but if I do change my mind, I'm probably not going to go with this color. I'm probably going to go with, like, a wet black and make the choke tower a different color, but I like the way it turned out. After the, the air filter's on here, you won't even be able to see it, so... I mean, it's a, it's, it is a moot point. Um, everything else was all covered. You, you don't want these vent tubes, anything in here. That goes to your fuel. You don't want anything trapped in there. So those were all covered up. But, um, but yeah, this, uh, this ends part one of this carburetor restoration. Uh, in part two, we're going to go ahead and uh, start um, figuring out what we're going to do with the jetting and the metering blocks along with the bowls and then figuring out what plate I'm going to use. So that's all for today. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.